Uh, there's been a lot, a lot of controversy. Uh, I think people see the crisis of Pope Francis beginning in 2013. They're unsettled. And so they say, well, Pope Benedict is the true Pope. His resignation was invalid. Uh, often they, they refer to the Munis Ministerium distinction and say that he either accidentally or on purpose made a mistake in his resignation document. Therefore, Pope Benedict is the true Pope. Francis is an anti-Pope. What do you say about that, Your Excellency? Uh, all these um, attempts are, for me, against common sense and against evidence. Uh, because there are several proofs and expressions of the former Pope Benedict, who said that he is not the Pope. Mm -hmm. For example, when he, his last meeting with the Cardinals, when he already uh, um, announced his resignation, he said to the Cardinals, you will elect a new Pope to whom I will submit myself and to whom I promise obedience. Mm -hmm. So, how can he submit to someone who is not Pope? It is a, it is a contradiction in, and it could, so we do uh, Benedict a schizophrenic person if he would think in this way. Then, in the last general audience, he spoke clearly that I did the resignation with full conscience, with freedom, and knowing all the consequences of this act. So these are the own words. And then there are all the, the other two uh, proofs in a letter he, which he wrote in 2014 to uh, Andrea Tornielli, it's a Vaticanist, where he repeated almost his words from the general audience and said, there is not a slight, the lightest doubt of the validity of my resignation. Mm -hmm. And it would be absurd to doubt about this. Mm -hmm. These are words from a letter which was published in the, in the newspaper La Stampa. And then last year, in a conversation of a journalist from the Italian newspaper uh, Corriere della Sera, uh, Pope Benedict said the words as reported by the journalist, and I assume he reported this correctly. I cannot, from principle, deny that these, these journalists did not report the, the, the words of the Pope. In any case, he reported this in quotation marks in the written edition and then the Vatican News the same, in quotation marks, this, this the Pope, the former Pope Benedict said, there is only one Pope, and this is Francis. Mm -hmm. So we have, and then the other principle, we are the visible church. We are not a church of dreamers, um, agnostic church. We are the real incarnational church, a visible church. So, and therefore, the superior has a kind of, the position of the superior has a kind of um, presumption of his validity. And then, also, the church does not uh, judge about the interior intentions. We cannot see these, but judge on the words and acts uh, the exterior, and there are sufficient exterior words of the Pope, which he stated that he abdicated, he made a resignation with full conscience and with freedom. And independently how he behaves now, he is vesting as a Pope, he is giving uh, the, Bened the apostolic benediction, but this is another case, this is his behavior. But his official words are clear that there is only one Pope. And he also himself mentions 
Pope Francis in the canon of the Mass. So, yes. Now I and saw. He's, a... Then he is not governing. He is not making no act of jurisdiction. So he is not naming bishops. He is not naming cardinals. If he would be a pope, really. Yes. If, for example, there is only one pope, as they say, Benedict, and not Francis, then all the bishops appointed in these seven years are invalid bishops. Yes. Well, or I guess they'd be real bishops, but not, they'd have no ordinary jurisdiction. No, I mean invalid because of jurisdiction, yeah, not of yes, the consecration. Yes. The consecration is valid, the ordination, but their jurisdiction is invalid. Right. And then. That's a problem. Uh, and all the cardinals appointed by the Pope. Now, they are more than the half of the College of Cardinals appointed by Pope Francis. So, Cardinal Müller would be not Cardinal, <laughs> because he was appointed by Francis. Yes. And so on. It would be an absurdity. Mm -hmm. So, we will go to the direction of the sede vacantists. Yes. And, uh, and then, let us say, also all the practical consequences. If uh, Benedict dies tomorrow, According to them, uh, Pope Francis is not Pope, yeah. so we will be without Pope. And then, who will elect the new Pope? Who? Because the, the, more than the half of the co College of Cardinals are not Cardinals, according to them, because they were appointed by Francis. It is impossible, practically, the Church cannot exist then, because, and I cannot imagine, no one, no one Cardinal who was appointed before Francis, who would, who would convoke uh, a conclave to elect the successor of Benedict when he tomorrow dies, for example. Yes. And then, and then when Francis will, will still live and reign, let us say, six, six seven years. Mm -hmm. So, we will be, according to their thesis, six, seven years, a set of vacantists, the entire church, right. without a pope. And this is against the divine constitution of the visibility of the church. Yes. So all these, the consequences of these thesis is going simply to absurdity. Mm -hmm. to absurdity. Yeah. Well, like you mentioned, well, us, if, if Benedict the Sixteenth, Ratzinger right now is celebrating mass, and in the Te Igitur, or whatever canon he's using, is saying the name Francis, Francis Una yes. Cum. He, and he and he's says, really he the says, Pope. He is in schism with himself. How is that possible? Yes. yes, exactly. It's a good argument. And he does this because people who assist in his Mass, he mentions Una Cum Francisco, Papa Nostro. Yes. So there it is. And, and, so, and yes. you were recently with Benedict Ratzinger, I think last year, there's a photo of you with him. Yes. And, and what was it? I'm just curious, what was it like being with him? Yes, he was very sharp minded, mm -hmm. very conscious, mm -hmm. even bodily frail. But uh, he, he spoke with the entire group of our bishops from Central Asia. Very, uh, how do you say? I would say I was on his side because I had to translate from. Yeah, you were speaking the German. German translating to the other bishops. And uh, I was observing, he was reacting so um, vigilantly, so consciously to every bishop. Uh, it was a proof that he is very sharp in his mind. And he said to me, because I was the first who came to him, they said to me, you are German, you go first. Mm. And so I went to him first and I greeted him in German. And he suddenly said to me a phrase, I don't like to see, to say this here now, but a phrase which is so personal to me, which only he could know ah. about me. Mm -hmm. He spoke something about me mm -hmm. in so a precise manner and directly in German, mm -hmm. that it was for me a proof that this man is very sharp-minded still, mm. and he knows all what is going on, yes. and therefore, the book which he wrote together with Cardinal Sara on priestly celibacy. It is for me, I'm convinced he was doing this consciously mm -hmm. and with his sharp mind. Yes. He was yes. not in some way as 
as journalists said uh, against Cardinal Sara that if it, that Cardinal Sara uh, uh, abused him for his uh, aims. No, I was a witness at least in March last year during the Adlimina that he was so, and so he reacted to other bishops the same. I was in his side, for example. And if, if he were still the Pope, I assume many of those bishops in that audience would have been appointed to their diocese by Francis, right? Yes. I mean, yes, they were. They were. He would not. I mean, was there anything that would give one way or the other the pretense that he thought he was the Pope or didn't think he was the Pope in your meeting with oh, him? I did not notice yeah. this. Right. He was simply a very kind, fatherly mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, even, uh, paternal, paternal behavior. Mm -hmm. And so, and let us say another hypothesis, if Pope Francis tomorrow converts radically and becomes a true zealous Pope, mm -hmm. like Pius, Pius, the, the Pius the Tenth, yes. let us say, mm -hmm. because God can do this, mm -hmm. he is almighty, and conversions did happen in, in the history of the church. St. Paul converted Saul to Paul, and so on. If he converts and starts to, to expel the, the wrong teaching and to may, maybe make a dogma, proclaim a dogma, mm -hmm. ex cathedra, mm -hmm. let us say that the priestly, the sacrament of the orders in all its three grades Diaconate, presbyterate, and episcopate is reserved only for the persons of the male sex. Mm -hmm. If he would proclaim this ex cathedra, would these people who do not recognize him as Pope accept this dogma? Right. A question. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if he would really fulfill his duty, then is all the zeal. Would they accept him? Mm -hmm. My my suspicion is most of these people are, like so many of us, wounded and are confused. It's th These are very, you're a bishop, you're highly educated, you're multilingual, and it, we have to admit it's very complicated. And so for people, they just want certainty and they don't want to be afraid and they don't want to be confused. And I think for most people, this is the position they don't want to be a full out set of a contest. And so the idea that Benedict is still the Pope is a comfort to them and it maybe allows them to, to lead their life. But as you as you pointed out, the consequences of this position are very drastic. They're, they're, they're severe. Yes, you are correct. And I can understand. And in some way, it is a mitigated factors. Mm -hmm. Because really the confusion is so tremendous, yeah. I can understand yeah. this, but it is not, it is wrong, even so, I have to state this is a wrong, and a wrong way, because maybe ultimately hidden, these people are not accepting the cross, the tremendous cross of this pontificate, that we are now staying on Golgotha, mm -hmm. and seeing as our mother church is crucified. Mm -hmm. with this tremendous confusion, with this papacy. Yeah. And they cannot, and they in some way are going away from the cross and uh, fabricating another world, their world, mm -hmm. with Pope Benedict. And so this is for me, in some way, at also a lack of trust that God is holding his church in the hands, mm -hmm. that God will um, will put an end to this trial also in his time. And these people should simply not too much concentrate themselves to the popes, I mean to the Pope, not, 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 not necessary. They have the catechism, the traditional catechism. They know the faith. They have the Holy Mass. They have Jesus in the Eucharist. They can do good works, they can do penance, and they can uh, pray, they can spread the faith. Why should they daily look and be concentrated on the Vatican and Rome? It's not necessary. 
they can in former times people lift and spread the faith even not some not knowing the name of the pope mm -hmm. they were not television there was nothing but they were edifying the church with their life with their faith and so i would recommend this my dear brothers and sisters abandon this absurdity of this thesis that pope benedict is still the pope uh, this is completely uh, a fantasy and uh, descend to the reality of the cross and do not so be so much concentrated on the Vatican and what the Pope is doing and live your life and offer your sacrifices for the renewal of the church, for the renewal of the papacy and God will accept this. because the papal election is an act of administration. It is not an act of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit offers his inspiration to all the participants in the conclave. But the Holy Spirit cannot go against the free will of the human being. It would not be a free will anymore. Therefore, 120 cardinals at the same time might as well reject the Holy Spirit's inspiration. And many of them did, obviously, in 1978. The election of a pope is nothing but a mere act of administration, and it can be ruled over by any pope for once. As a matter of fact, no pope after Paul IV ever said again that a cardinal who was a heretic cannot become pope. A cardinal who is a formal heretic cannot become pope because if he's a formal heretic, he does not hold office. But a cardinal who was a heretic, no matter formal or material, definitely can become pope if he converts. No pope after Paul IV has ever said anything to the contrary. When Pope Pius X renewed the, the order of the conclave, he didn't mention the fact at all. And even though it is mentioned in a, in a document that is infallible in itself, disciplinary, disciplinary matters cannot be infallible.